Boy, it's my pleasure to open God's Word for you this week. Pastor Kenny's been feeling a little under the weather, so uh, I am pinch hitting today. And I think I want to start uh, by saying I'm a horrible sitter. Uh, And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, in this world of pandemic and Zoom calls, um, I kind of found out that I'm just a horrible, I'm horrible at sitting for any period of time. So I've been on too many Zoom calls with the camera straight on the face. And then when I stand up to pace, you know, it's always got the wrong angle. So anyway, if I stand and pace today, you'll know why. So I just share that with you. So who is welcome at Set Free Church? Does anybody know the answer to that question? (laughs) Amen. Amen. Uh, is, is there anyone that would be excluded from attending and coming to our wonderful church? No, I can't imagine. Well, today I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be speaking, preaching on the subject of uh, Jesus, the prescription for all. And so I, I'm going to be taking a lot of scripture into this, uh, but let's just start by praying, uh, Father in heaven. I pray today that your word would meet the ears of your people, that all who have ears would listen. Father, that you'd remove the obstacles from this person here trying to deliver your word, an imperfect man. Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to be a better man as you would define it. And Father, as the words come out of my mouth today, let them be yours and not muddled up and mixed up with any of my own. (laughs) It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Jesus, the prescription all. Here's the thing. At some time in your life, you're going to need a doctor, you know. I know a lot of healthy people, but at some time in their life, they're going to need a doctor. They're gonna, you're going to need a doctor for your body, for your teeth, and even your soul. I can promise you this, the older I get, the uh, more I need doctors, unfortunately. And, you know, the more questions I have about health, welfare, politics, and even the future of the rest of my life. There's a lot of parts between my feet and the top of my head, inside out. Not all those parts work right. I promise you that. But I can understand that there is something about coming to the house of the Lord. Amen. Mark 2.17 says, When Jesus heard it, he said, he said to them, They that are whole have no need for the physician, but they that are sick... I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came to hang out with sinners, folks. He didn't come to hang out so he could run a, an, a marathon and work out at the YMCA. <laughs> he came to deal with people who needed spiritual healing, a spiritual doctor. In Mark 2, 1 through 12, it says... A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it. And then they lowered the mat and the man that was lying on it. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked in full view of them. 
This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we've never seen anything like this. Even though Jesus is not physically here in this house, his presence is, amen? The scriptures say where two or more are gathered, he is present, he is in the midst of us. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven, for where two or our three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. You see there is power in joining together. There's power in numbers gathered in Jesus' name. Those that received the gift of the Holy Spirit had received the power as Jesus did. The only difference between Jesus, you and I, really, is how much we believe in the depths of our soul. Jesus had the kind of faith of a, he said a mustard seed. The faith of a mustard seed could move a mountain. Do you believe that strong? I try. I, I'm not sure I can. I try with all my heart, but I fail sometimes, you know. Can we really believe that Jesus can heal through us? Are we plugged into God's full power are we really full of the Holy Spirit? Do we believe enough to pray with faith, knowing we're going to see the results? See, here's, here's what Google or Wikipedia or most dictionaries will tell you the definition of faith is. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So the definition of faith again, according to the world, is complete trust. And the reason why I want to use the world's definition here, I'll get to in a second. Complete trust or confidence in something. There's no room, is there? It's not 99.9%, .9%, right? It sounds like 100% complete to me. So here we are in an imperfect world, loved by a perfect God, knowing that our brothers and sisters, that man itself is, is, is not perfect, amen? Does anybody here feel like they're perfect? Mm -hmm. Neither do I. So if man isn't perfect, is there a day that goes by when man doesn't sin? You know, in fact, how imperfect, we're so imperfect, we're not even close to perfect. We're on the other side of the spectrum. Thank God for Jesus, amen? Then why would I put my complete trust and confidence in something that man made or in man himself? If I'm putting my trust and confidence in something, would I put it for, into something from this world that man made? Or would I feel that I completely trust and I can completely have confidence in only God and in only in Jesus Christ, his one and only son? So this, this uh, the title of the sermon, you see, the prescription we need, the prescription for all of us, simple, one word, it's Jesus, right? Isn't it true that when we really need healing, when we're really hurting, that we will do almost anything it takes to feel better? Whatever it takes, we will pay, we'll lay, we'll pray, we'll, for a cure or a fix, right? So whether we have to go to an emergency room or make an appointment with a doctor, we will do everything it takes to try and not hurt anymore. We go to the facility to meet the physician. We go through the paperwork. We go through the insurance stuff. We tell the whole life history. Then we're finally brought to the examination room and the nurse goes through some things with us. Then we wait, still in pain. We wait and sorry, worry, worry, wait. And we start looking at utensils around the room. We start playing with things in the room. And then we hear that knock on the door. Is it finally the doctor? He questions us again. He checks us again. He asks all the questions again. And then the verdict. Either he's going to suggest another appointment with a specialist, probably, a treatment, or a prescription. I mean, there's probably a couple other outcomes I could think of that come from going to the doctor, but that's pretty much the end result, right? Another appointment, a treatment, or a prescription. The doctor says, I'm going to give you this prescription. He says, take it all, even if you feel better in a couple days, right? 
<laughs> Take it all, keep taking it until it's gone. That's what I hear my doctor say. If you're not better, then come back or we'll send you a refill. <laughs> so here's a suggestion. You know, a suggestion, perhaps even a prescription for your eternal soul. Keep coming back to church until you leave this world. You need this for as long as you're alive. This is your spiritual doctor. Jesus is. Your body needs this. Your heart needs this. Your mind needs this. Your soul needs this. Even if you... Your little pinky, your little pinky needs this. So if you miss a dose, right, with the doctor, you get back on schedule. If you miss too much, you may have a relapse or get worse. So here, brothers and sisters, let's not relapse. Let's stay coming to church. Let's stay in front of the one true healer, the one true prescriber of something that we all really need. I want to talk about the attributes of God as part of this message. Um, only a few. Our God is a God of many attributes, and each one reveals a different aspect of his nature and character. First attribute I want to talk about is his sovereignty. Sovereignty. Everybody knows what that word means. Sovereignty means that God is sovereign over me putting my glasses there. He knew I was going to do it before I did it. I didn't have to have a reason why. He just knew that was going to be the way it is. He is sovereign. Nothing surprises him. He knows every hair on your head by number. Our God is sovereign. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He, his will cannot be thwarted, you see. Psalm 103.19 says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven. And his kingdom rules over all. The second attribute I want to talk about is this holiness. You see, God is completely separate from sin and evil. And his character is pure and righteous. In Isaiah 6, 3, it says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. When we come into the presence of God, we must recognize who he is and who we are with reverence. This is the, the triune God of the universe, the creator of all. And we are dust in the wind, as Kansas would say. You were here today and gone tomorrow. But while we're here, we got to recognize God is holy and we should be in awe of who he is. Sometimes we have to really understand and get into the low parts of our life. Sometimes we have to be caught up in the deepest part of our sin and despair before we can really appreciate and see how big our God is to love us anyway, to forgive us anyway, and to always never change his mind never changes his mind. He is consistent today and always. You see, God is love. That's another attribute of God. His love is nothing like anything you've experienced because it's 24-7, unconditional, sacrificial love. The only reason that you and I can experience love is because God is love. His Holy Spirit dwells within us. He left it with us to help us understand the difference between right and wrong, but also to give us a glimpse of his unconditional love. He gives us a taste for that in our own family, right? And in our kids, right? You know, though they do things that we're not pleased with, we always love them. A taste of his divine, perfect love for us that never ends and never fails because God is faithful. That's the other attribute I want to speak to. God is always true to his word and his promises. He cannot lie. Second Timothy 2.13 says, If we are faithless... He remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. So even when we are unfaithful, you see, God remains faithful. He can't be anything else. His grace is unmerited. 
We can't do anything to deserve it. We can't do anything to be good enough to pass the pre-qualification test to get into heaven. There ain't good, good enough to get you in heaven because it ain't about you and what you can do. It's about God and it's about Jesus and what he already did for you. You see, he sent his one and only son here. God did. His one and only son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life and die a perfect death so that we can be reunited with God in heaven forever and ever and ever. That's his plan for us. And so how do we respond to that? How do we respond to that? I am thankful. I am grateful that God would even include me in his plan. 1 Peter 2.22 through 25 says, He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, brothers and sisters. By his wounds, you have been healed. For we were all like sheep gone astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. As we reflect on who God is, his perfect attributes, let's not forget the simple fact, the first simple attribute, that there's nothing that takes God by surprise. He is sovereign over everything. You think your life's out of control? He doesn't. He knows the plan he has for you. Plans to prosper, not to harm. Plans to give you hope in the future, says the scriptures. You see, he is holy, loving, just, gracious, and merciful. There is not a prescription written by man that is not flawed. Because man is flawed. Tainted with sin. Incapable. We are incapable of healing ourselves. We are incapable of healing our souls without our Jesus. God is worthy of all our worship, all our praise, and obedience. Christian, do you have something better to live for? Hear me in that. Christian, do you have something better to live for than your God? If you answered yes to that question, then we, we ought to talk after the service, okay? <laughs> but as we, as we considered uh, you know, our sermon this week and the message, uh, I pray this week that we seek to live our lives in a way that honors God, that honors who he is and brings glory to his name. Because as Kenny said in his sermon last week, you know, when we shed the old man's clothes, all we have left is Jesus. All we have left to live for is the Jesus that saved us from sin, that has given us eternal life, that loves us so much. He sent his only son to die for us. That's the God we serve. Pray with me. Father, thank you so much that your love is undefinable by man's lips. We try, there's many words we try to describe your love, your mercy, your grace, your undying, endless. How do you do it, Lord? We, we can never figure it out because we're an imperfect man with an imperfect mind. And we'll never be able to wrap our heads around a perfect God who loves us perfectly. So, Father, help us release anything that we're clinging to that keeps us from you. Father, we know you are the only prescription in this life we need. There's nothing happening to our will or our bodies that surprises you that you don't know about. So, Father, we come to you and we ask, would you guide us? Would you protect us? Draw us a little closer to you more every single day, Father. 
We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.